Good morning. What's your name? Philip. How do you spell it? F I L I P. Are you nineteen, Philip? No, I'm not. I'm only sixteen. Where are you from? I'm from the Czech Republic. So you're Czech. Thank you. Hi, I'm Catalina. Good afternoon, Catalina. How do you spell your name? It's C A T A L I N A. Thank you. And how old are you? I'm fifteen. Are you Spanish? No, I'm not. I'm Mexican. Thanks. Hi, guys. I'm Zara. And I'm her brother Callum. I'm seventeen years old. And I'm sixteen. We're from Edinburgh, the Scottish capital. And this is our awesome vlog. Born in Scotland. We make all kinds of vlogs about all kinds of topics, but a lot of the time we just vlog about our day. These daily vlogs are really popular. Lots of you want to know how we do it, so you can do it too. So. Here are the top five secrets to our success. These are the steps we take to achieve our goal and make fun vlogs about our day. Step one is get up early. I know, I know, but we both think it's a great time to vlog. I get up around seven, but. I get up around six. I have a shower. I brush my teeth. I get dressed, and then I vlog for around ten to fifteen minutes. Then it's time for step two: start your vlog. You can start like this. Good morning, guys. How are you? It's another amazing day for another amazing vlog. Or like this. Hey, it's Callum. It's my vlog, and it's very, very cool. But don't worry about it. Just do what's natural. Then, once you start the vlog, it's time for step three. Talk about your day, like this. First, I have breakfast. Then I take the bus to school, and at half past twelve, I have lunch, and after lunch, I have guitar lessons. Then I go home, and then. It's time for step four: vlog in the evening. You can vlog about everything, so why not vlog after your homework, like this? Hi guys, here we go. It's homework time. Just do your homework, Callum. <sighs> Vlog when you have dinner. Mmm, this is delicious. Eat your dinner, Callum. Vlog when you relax and listen to music. I love this song. <laughs> and vlog when you watch TV. Let's see what's on. No TV, Callum. We vlog all day. It isn't always easy, but that's the secret to a great daily vlog. And before we go to bed, 
It's time for step five. Finish your video. Why not try something like this? Later, guys. Or this. See you next time, my friends. Or just this. Bye. And that's it. Nice one, Callum. <laughs> Thanks, Zara. All you need to do now is edit your video, watch it, and put it online. But that isn't always easy. You need to take your time. But it's good to do it. So, congratulations! You're now a vlogger like us. So that's it from us. One more time, Callum. Bye. See you next time. Hi, guys. I'm Molly, and this is my vlog, Easy Yoga in the Park. Congratulations! You want to know how to do yoga? That's awesome. Before we start our first lesson, I want to tell you why I love yoga. Yoga is part of my daily routine. I do it for ten minutes in my bedroom when I get up in the morning. Then I have a shower, get dressed. Have some breakfast and go to school, and I'm ready to study. After school, I have lots of things to do: piano lessons on Tuesdays and tennis lessons on Thursdays. Then, in the evening, I have dinner and do my homework in the dining room. There's no time to watch TV. I'm always tired after my busy day, but I can't relax. That's when I do more yoga. I do it for thirty minutes before I go to bed, and then it's easy to sleep. Now, it's time for you to do some yoga. You're probably new to yoga, but don't worry about it. Just watch, listen. And copy me. How to manage stress. Like adults, it's normal for teenagers to feel stress, and it can be useful at times. A bit of stress helps you to complete your daily routine, but stress isn't good when it makes you unhappy or worried. So, why not try these ways to relax? Do daily exercise. Go for a run or a bike ride, or just go for a walk. Walking quickly for an hour every day gives you all the exercise you need. Do breathing exercises. You don't normally think when you breathe, but when you breathe very slowly, it relaxes you. Just do these exercises for five minutes at different times during the day. Do a favorite activity. When you take a break to do something you love, you relax and feel good. So, watch some TV, talk to friends, or maybe make a cake. Sleep for eight to ten hours a night. To sleep well, don't use electronic gadgets for an hour before bedtime. Read a good book instead, and go to bed. At a regular time too. I enjoy doing exercise. Me too. I love going for a run after school. So do I. I like going for a bike ride too. Really? I don't. I hate riding a bike. I don't like having a guitar lesson after school. Neither do I. I think it's boring. Me too, and I don't like going to chess club. Really? I do. I love it. I enjoy doing exercise. I love going for a run. 
I hate riding a bike. I don't like drawing a picture. I think it's boring. I love it. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Hey, Noah. I'm bored. Bored? Why? My friends are busy. They're busy every weekend. I never see them. Do they go to clubs? Yes. Pablo goes to a football club. Katie's in a swimming club, and Ali goes to the gym. I need a hobby, but I hate sport. Really, I love sport. I play football and I go for a run every morning. It's good for you. Well, I don't like running, and I don't like early mornings. How about gaming? My sister goes to the gaming club at school. They meet every Tuesday, and at the weekend she plays online with her friends. I sometimes play too. Do you want to do that? Oh no, sorry. I can't stand gaming. Right. Well, do you watch TV? Yeah, but. That isn't a hobby, and I don't really like it. Do you want to study something then? My brother learns Japanese. Wow, does he go to a club? No, he does classes and he chats to people online. He's got lots of friends. Well, that's great, but I don't really want to learn a new language. I do French at school, and the lessons are boring. Okay. Well, I don't know what to say. You don't like to study. You don't like being outdoors.、Uh, what about art? Are you a creative person? Yeah, I like art. Right. So do I. There's an art class on Monday after school. Let's go together. Okay. Hi, guys. Hello. Today's vlog is about fitness. Of course, I am a real athlete. I play football twice a week, and I go skateboarding every Saturday. So I'm pretty fit. But Zara, you like sport, don't you? <laughs> As Callum knows, I am crazy about sport. What sports do you play? I usually play tennis once a week, and I often play volleyball too. I'm on the school team for both. I go swimming three times a week, and I often practice my diving too. I love adventure sports too. In the winter, I go snowboarding, and in the summer, I love surfing and windsurfing. Oh, and I go to dance classes on Thursdays, but that's just for fun. It's a busy life, and keeping fit is really important to me. But do you know what? I hardly ever go to the gym. I do short workouts instead. They're only around five minutes, but they're really good. So good, I often vlog about them too. Now here's one of my favorite exercise routines. Are you ready? Let's go. First, we need to run on the spot like this. <laughs> Great. You can run fast, or you can run slowly. Whatever feels right. Just stay in the same place and move those legs. <laughs> right. 
Now it's time for some squats. Put your hands out, sit down, hold, and then stand up again. <laughs> and repeat. <laughs> That's great. Next, let's work on our legs with some lunges. Step forward with your right leg, then down. Then stand back up. <laughs> Excellent! Now step forward with your left leg, then down and back up again. Do this for one minute. Finally, relax. Close your eyes and breathe. Ah, fantastic. Thanks, guys. Remember, stay fit, have fun, and see you next time. Nice one, Zara. Thanks. I, uh, I have a new routine, actually. I know you're pretty fit, so let's give it a go. Uh, now? <laughs> yep. Step one. Run on the spot. Fast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Knees high. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> See you next time, guys. Welcome to the studio, Jack. Tell me, why do you like diving? I'm crazy about it. I just love the feeling when I dive into water. You're still at school at the moment, so when do you train? Well, Monday to Friday, I always go home after school and do my homework. Then I train between 5.30 and 8.30 p.m. And do you always train at the pool? <laughs> no, I don't. I only train there twice a week, actually. Really? Yes. I go to the gym four times a week and work on my skills there. To be a good diver, you need to be a pretty good gymnast, too. So, when do you go diving? I go diving on Tuesday evenings and every Saturday my training session is in the pool too. I practice diving for hours then. What do you do in your free time, Jack? <laughs> well, I don't have lots of free time, but I always try to have a break on Sundays. I usually relax with my family and friends and watch TV or listen to music. Do you sometimes go swimming? No, I never go swimming just for fun. I'm pretty hungry. What have you got to eat? Let's see. Uh, there's some cheese. Are there any eggs? Yes, there are. Is there any chicken? No, there isn't. There isn't any meat. Are there any potatoes? No, there aren't. And there aren't any beans. But there are some tomatoes. I can make a cheese and tomato omelette. Nice one, Tom. Is there any water? Yes, there is. There are three bottles. What's on the menu for sumo wrestlers? Sumo wrestling is the national sport of Japan and is an important part of Japanese culture. Today, there are some professional sumo wrestlers, rikishi, from other countries. Lots of them are from Mongolia, and there are some from Bulgaria and Estonia. But Japan is the only place where there are sumo competitions, or basho. There are six a year, and each one lasts for 15 days.
People don't become rikishi in Japan just for fun. It's how they live, and it's often difficult. Rikishi eat, sleep, and do exercise together in special sumo schools. They get up very early and train for five hours without any food. After their long workout, rikishi have lunch and then sleep. And this is their daily routine all year round. A rikishi's weight is two or three times more than a typical adult's. They're pretty large people, but they don't have an unhealthy diet. They always have chanko nabe for lunch. This traditional dish for rikishi contains different vegetables with chicken or fish. And gives them all the energy they need. And for dinner, there's more healthy food on the menu, like fish, noodles, and salad. Can we have a table for three, please? Certainly. Here's the menu. Are you ready to order? Yes, we'd like some bread and olives to start. And for your main course? I'd like the chicken salad, please. And I'd like the avocado salad, please. Can I have the hamburger, please? We haven't got any hamburgers today, but there are some vegetable burgers instead. Oh no, thanks. I can't stand vegetable burgers. I'd like the beef curry, please. Okay. And would you like anything to drink? Water for me. Uh, the same for me, please. And me. Hello, everyone. Hi there. As you can see, we're looking a bit different today. Yeah. What do you think? Looking good, right? <laughs> you see, we're going to our aunt's wedding today. That's why we aren't wearing our usual clothes. We're wearing these instead. I'm wearing a pretty pale blue skirt, and I love my beautiful cream top. And for me, it's goodbye to my usual jeans and t-shirt look, because I've got a white shirt on with a dark red tie and a very cool black jacket. And this isn't a skirt; it's a kilt. Scottish families have got different colours on their kilts. We're the McGregor family, and our kilts are red and dark green. We usually wear them on important days and for big family parties, like weddings. I hardly ever have the chance to wear mine, but I love it. You know, a lot of countries have their own clothes for special events. Indian women often wear beautiful long pink or red dresses at their wedding, which are always colorful events. These dresses are called saris. I love this red and gold sari this bride is wearing. It's gorgeous. Many Chinese couples wear red at weddings too, because it's a lucky color. In Norway, some couples wear a traditional wedding costume called a bunad. As you can see, the men wear long white socks. And short black trousers with a pair of black shoes. And in some parts of Peru, the traditional wedding costumes are very colorful and beautiful. These women have got long skirts and special wedding ponchos, a long piece of material you wear over your shoulders. And just look at those big, beautiful hats. And in Ghana, 
Uh, Zara, sorry to interrupt, but the wedding is in, like, an hour. Oh, no! Sorry about this, folks. But before we go, have you got any videos of a wedding in your country? Or any photos of you in your national costumes? Send them to us and tell us all about them. But right now, it's time for us to go. See you later, guys. <laughs> Bye! Hi, guys. Welcome to my blog about fashion styles. The first style I'm looking at today is Gothic. Gothic clothes are always dark colours, such as black trousers, a black top and black shoes. Gothic style isn't colourful. That's why it isn't my style. You see, dark colours make me sad, but colours like pink and red make me happy. I'm wearing a pale blue shirt and jeans today and my socks are pink and red. They're gorgeous, but they aren't gothic. The second style I want to talk about is vintage. These are clothes in styles and colours from the past. I'm not wearing anything like that today, but I have got some things at home. For example, I've got a 1970s style jacket and some 1960s style sunglasses. Fashion designers often use ideas from the past when they're designing new clothes. And that's how vintage styles become popular again. OK, the third fashion style we're looking at today is preppy. This style actually comes from the USA. That's because preppy clothes are the type of traditional clothes that students wear at prep schools there, such as a pale shirt with a sweater and a jacket. For boys, trousers called chinos are very preppy. They are pale brown trousers, not jeans. My Fashion Blog by Cara What's in fashion this season? Are people wearing big shirts or long skirts? Or are pale colours popular right now? Some clothes, like jeans, never go out of fashion. People wear them all the time. These days, you see lots of people in athleisure too. Made from two words, athletics and leisure, it describes sports clothes that you can wear every day, not just when you're going to the gym. Athleisure is very easy to wear. It doesn't take long to decide what to put on in the morning. Typical clothes are a pair of joggers with a t-shirt or sweatshirt and some cool trainers on your feet. Athleisure is especially popular with young people. When they see celebrities wearing athleisure in social media posts, they just want to follow their style. So, we know that many people prefer athleisure to jeans, for example, when they're relaxing in their free time. And, these days, it's pretty common for people to wear it at work or at school too. Some even wear athleisure when they go to parties. But what about it's something traditional, like a wedding? Can you imagine a couple wearing cream or white joggers and a sweatshirt at their wedding? I definitely can't. This photo shows a group of seven people. They look about 14 or 15, and I think they're classmates at school. They look like they're waiting to go into the classroom in the background. There are four girls and three boys. 
the girls have got long hair and the boys have got short hair. They're all wearing jeans and a t-shirt or a shirt and they're carrying school bags. They're smiling at the camera and they look happy and friendly. Maybe the person taking the photo is saying something funny. Hi Tess, can you tell Mum that my train is late? Yeah, OK. Are you going to football practice today? No, I'm not. It's raining and it's too cold. No one wants to play. OK. So, what are you doing? I can hear music. Yeah, but I'm not listening to music. It's the TV. It's a show about buying the perfect wedding dress. <laughs> Right now, there's a woman choosing a dark blue dress. Oh, do you like it? Yeah, it's gorgeous. <laughs> Tell your sister, the wedding's next month. <laughs> yeah, good idea. Hi, Maria. Where are you? What are you doing? I'm shopping in town at the moment. I'm looking for a birthday present for my sister. She's 13. I'm thinking about buying her a T-shirt. I'm looking at a dark red T-shirt with a photo of a favourite band. She loves T-shirts, but she usually wears pink or blue. I don't know if it's a good idea. I'm sending you a picture now. Tell me what you think. I'm meeting my family for lunch, so please, tell me soon. Hey, Ben. Who's that boy? Is he new? Oh, hi, Lucy. Where? I can't see him. Look, over there. He's wearing jeans and a really cool T-shirt. Where? Look, he's standing next to Jack. He's got curly hair. Oh, yeah. I see him. That's Julio. He's in my class. He's from Madrid. What's he like? He looks quiet. Yeah, he is quiet. But he's friendly. I like him. We're going shopping after school. Do you want to come? Yeah. Good idea. Great. See you at four o'clock. Good morning, everybody. In today's art class, we're talking about clothes and colour. Here are some photos of typical clothes from Japan and India. You can see they are very colourful. I'd like you to talk to your partner about them and then draw a design for a dress or jacket. I want it to be exciting and original and with lots of colour. Hey Luke, what are you doing? I'm reading a very interesting article online. There's a quiz too. What's it about? It's about colour and what your favourite colour says about your personality. Oh yeah, I like orange best. What does that say about me? Uh, oh. It means you're friendly and popular, Kira. Really? I think I'm quiet and a bit serious. Yeah, you are quiet, but you're funny too, and everyone likes you. Oh, thanks. You're very kind. Hi, guys. It's just me today. I have exams this week. But Callum is house-sitting for our cousin, James. He's a student and he lives in Liverpool. It's Callum's first time there and it looks like he's having a great time. But I really want to see the flat. I love seeing other people's homes. And... I've got lots of photos from Callum. Do you want to take a virtual tour? Come on in 
And let's take a look. OK, so this is the living room and uh, also the hall. Callum says the flat is very small and the front door opens right into the living room. What do you think? I mean, the sofa looks comfortable, but I'm not a fan of the colour and I don't like that carpet on the floor. OK, over here's a big cupboard, which looks useful. And the room isn't dirty. It's actually pretty tidy. So it's OK, I guess. Let's check out the next photo. The kitchen. Oh, this is nice. It looks narrow, but it's very clean. And I like those plants. Nice one, James. Right, next photo and it's the bathroom. And again, not too bad. It's small, but it's got everything you need. A small sink. A toilet, of course, <laughs> and a shower. All in all, James, it's a nice flat. And Callum says it's only 10 minutes from the city centre. He loves it. Of course, it's a lot smaller than our house. Do you want to see it? Hang on. I'm sure I've got photos here. Here we are. Of course, our house is bigger than James's flat. A lot bigger. Check it out. It's got four large bedrooms, including my room which has a beautiful little balcony with a view of the gardens. Downstairs, we've got a lovely dining room and we have a kitchen with two ovens, four sinks and five huge fridges. That's where our chefs cook all our delicious meals, of course. <laughs> yep, it's an amazing place. The only problem is, it isn't real. This is our real house. Sure, it's smaller and cheaper than the house of my dreams, but it's still nice. What about you? What's the house of your dreams? A huge mansion or a modern house with a pool? Post your comments below and let us know. We'll check them out when Callum's back. But for now, see you guys next time. Hi, Kate. What are you doing? I'm looking at photos of unusual houses. It's for a project at school. Look at this one. Hang on. Is that a house or a big stone? It's a house between two stones. That's amazing. I know. It's sometimes called Stone House and it's on a mountain in Portugal. There aren't any other houses next to it. And look at those beautiful blue skies behind it. What about the other house? That one's the tree house and it's in a huge tree. Look, part of the tree are under the floor and over the roof. It's fantastic. So, what do you think of the houses, Kate? Stone house is more unusual than the tree house, I guess. <laughs> you don't usually see a house between two huge stones. 
<laughs> That's true. I think Stonehouse looks very natural because its walls and roof and the stones are all the same colour. You're right. When you're far from it, it probably just looks like a big stone. I think that's very clever. Me too. I think it's probably darker in Stone House than in the Tree House because the windows are narrow. Hmm. So maybe it's colder too. The Tree House is larger than Stone House, and I think it looks more comfortable. So do I. It says here that the tree house has got a kitchen and a living room together, and then there's a big bedroom and a small bathroom. Really? Yes. I love the big balcony in front of the tree house. Me too. Imagine sitting on it with all those beautiful trees around you. Sounds great. I definitely prefer this house. I want to paint my bedroom, but I find choosing colours difficult. How about painting it dark red? I'm not so sure. It's a dark room. Hmm. Maybe a pale colour is a better idea. I agree. Why don't we try pale blue? Good idea. Let's go to the shop now. Hello, I'm Anna. And welcome to Solve My Problems. Today, I'm with Linda in her bedroom. Now, what's the problem, Linda? It's my wardrobe. It's full of clothes. Look! Oh, no. That's terrible. I find choosing clothes in the morning difficult, so I need to find a solution. OK. How about putting some clothes under your bed? I'm not so sure, Anna. There are lots of shoes under my bed. Maybe buying another wardrobe is a better idea. But my bedroom's pretty small. There isn't any space for more furniture. And buying new furniture is expensive. Do you wear all the clothes, Linda? No, I don't. Some of them are pretty old. Why don't we tidy your wardrobe and sell the clothes you don't need online? You can make some money too. Good idea. Let's do that. You know that you can do the same with old books, comics and shoes and things. World Travel Japan's capital, Tokyo, is an exciting and interesting city. Tourists are always surprised by how busy it is. When you take the train, people called Oshia push you on quickly so the trains aren't late. And at Shibuya Crossing, the world's busiest pedestrian crossing, Thousands of people crossed the street at the same time. Today, Tokyo's architecture is pretty modern. On sunny days, from many of its tall buildings, you can easily see beautiful Mount Fuji, the highest mountain in Japan. One of the strangest places to stay in Tokyo is called a capsule hotel. They are cheaper than other hotels. You sleep in a box, not a room, and you don't have your own bathroom. Kenya's huge national parks have got some of the most beautiful wild animals in them, like lions and red elephants. It's safer to go on a trip with local guides to see them there. They know how to get near the animals so you can take the most fantastic photos. Kenya also has some of the best beaches in Africa. There are miles of gorgeous ones along the Indian Ocean. The hotels there 
are the perfect places to relax. And for those with more energy, there are wonderful activities like windsurfing, surfing and diving in the amazingly blue sea. Where are the nearest toilets, please? Take the second right and cross the square. There are some toilets next to the cinema. Thanks very much. Excuse me, I'm looking for the food hall. OK, uh, turn left here and go along the corridor. The entrance to the food hall is opposite a big clothes shop. Thanks for your help. I don't know where Sam's Cafe is. Sorry? I don't know where Sam's Cafe is. Can you show me on this floor plan, please? No problem. We're here in front of the cinema and Sam's Cafe is there. It's between a shoe shop and a sports shop. Nice one. Thanks. Hi there, it's me, Callum. And me, Zara. And we're talking about Callum's favourite topic, Edinburgh. As you already know, Edinburgh is fantastic. It's great. It's amazing. <laughs> OK, Callum, we understand. It is wonderful. Its old streets and beautiful castle make it one of... No, forget that. Make it the best place in the world. It's famous for its buildings, its culture... Come on, Callum! <laughs> and its incredible festivals. Ah, finally! <laughs> Every year, Edinburgh is home to six different festivals and the city's streets are crowded with around four million tourists from lots of different countries. The most famous of these is the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, the biggest arts festival in the world. It's famous for its street theatre. I love it because I love drama and I want to be an actor. But there are lots of other cultural events too, like dance, art and music. There are street concerts all over the place and you can hear all kinds of music, from rock and hip-hop to traditional music from different countries. Last year, these guys played and they were incredible. And the shows don't just happen in the streets and squares. You can watch events in many of the city's theatres, cafes and restaurants. I watched about 10 shows last year and I wanted to see so many more. There are posters and TV screens everywhere advertising new acts and new events. There really is something for everyone to enjoy. So when you come to Edinburgh, try to come in August so you don't miss it. <laughs> yep, I agree with all that. And I really like the Fringe. But it isn't my favourite festival. I'm into art and I love going to art exhibitions. But the festival I enjoy the most doesn't have famous paintings or sculptures. It's a very different kind of festival where the people in the audience become the artists. It's called Holy, or the Festival of Colour. It's an Indian festival, 
but a lot of people celebrate it in the UK. It's famous for something called colour throwing, so you need to wear old clothes. I didn't last year. Big mistake. But I still had so much fun. Of course, there's more than just that. Last year, I watched a theatre show, went to a dance show and listened to traditional Indian music. Oh, and I had traditional Indian food, which was amazing. Oh, yeah. That's one of the best things about the Edinburgh Festival, too. There are trucks all over the city selling all kinds of food. OK, but there are lots of good things that aren't in Edinburgh, you know. Hey, maybe you guys can send us some. What is your favourite festival? Why do you love it? Maybe you can show Callum that Edinburgh isn't the only place with good festivals. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Let's see. OK, until next time. Bye. Let's go and see that new show. It's got some brilliant rock songs in it. But the reviews aren't good. They say it's nothing special. The acting is terrible and the characters are boring. Don't worry about the reviews, Carrie. You're into loud rock music. No thanks, Emma. I want to stay at home and watch that new series on TV. Clara Wieck was born on the 13th of September 1819 in Leipzig, Germany. Her parents both loved classical music. Her mother could sing well, and her father was an excellent pianist. He started teaching Clara to play the piano from a young age. Her parents could see that she was very talented, so she started playing the piano in concerts. First, she played concerts in Germany. Then, in 1830, when she was only 11, Clara started travelling round Europe with her father. She performed in cities like Paris and Vienna. People couldn't believe how good she was, and she could remember all the pieces of music she played in a concert. Next, in 1840, Clara married a German composer called Robert Schumann and changed her name to Clara Schumann. Clara's father wasn't happy about the wedding, but he couldn't stop it. After that, Robert and Clara started a family. There were eight children. Sadly, Robert died in 1856 at the age of 46. Life wasn't easy for Clara, but she continued to perform concerts around Europe and to compose and teach music. Then, in 1878, Clara was the first piano teacher at a new music school in Frankfurt, Germany. Some very talented international pianists learnt the piano with her, and most of them were young women. In the end, Clara died in 1896. She was 76. A few months ago, I painted a self-portrait at school and my art teacher really loved it. She wanted me to enter it into an art competition. Lucky you! I couldn't believe it because really talented artists enter this competition. How wonderful! Anyway, last week there was an exhibition of all the paintings. 
While I was there, something amazing happened. Really? As soon as I started looking at the self-portraits, I noticed a sign next to mine. It was first place in the 14 to 16-year-olds category. No way! That's incredible! Well done! Thanks! A year ago, something awful happened to me. Really? What? I was in a big dance show at school. It was Disney's The Lion King, and I was Simba the Lion. Wow! How amazing! The first performance was good, but then there were lots of problems with the second one. I couldn't remember what to do in two of the dances. Oh no! How terrible! After that, I received some bad reviews. Poor you! It's funny now. But it wasn't at the time. I hated it. Hello and welcome to the show. Today, I'm looking at events this summer. Let's start with the Summer Arts Festival. Last year, the festival took place in July, but this year it begins on the first of August and ends on the seventh. That's seven days of music. Dancing and street theatre in the city centre. Now, for some of the top events, last year we were very lucky because an incredible dance group from India performed at the festival. Well, this year they're here again. You can see them on Wednesday. Do not miss this. Another brilliant event is a concert by rock band Le Storm. This band has some of the best musicians in the world, and this year includes Jacques Noir on the drums. Finally, are you into jazz music? All the jazz concerts are at the new theatre in the city centre. That's the Star Theatre, S T A R R, not the Half Moon. Don't forget. You can buy tickets on the festival website, or at one of these two theatres. Hi guys, how's it going? Welcome to my digital detox. Yep, that's right. No phone, no computer, and no tablet for a whole week. My parents think that teenagers are all phone zombies that can't live without digital devices, but I want to show they're wrong. Zara didn't want to do it at all, <laughs> and that's the problem. I think my parents could be right. I mean, when I told my friends, they all thought I was crazy. They couldn't imagine life without their phones, and I wasn't sure what to expect either. But on Monday, the first thing I discovered was I had a lot more time. I usually turn on my phone as soon as I get up. Then, while I get dressed, I check my messages, and while I have breakfast, I scroll through my social media. But last Monday morning, I realised how much time I spend on my phone. I was ready for school half an hour earlier than usual. That felt good. I was even early for the bus, and that never happens. But then Tuesday was hard because I walked to school, and I started to see screens all over the place. I mean. Everyone was looking at phone screens, tablet screens, or laptop computer screens. At that point, I couldn't wait to go online, and I really missed my phone. But you know what? I also saw that we don't chat face to face very often, and that became a real problem 
when I went to see my friends on Wednesday. They were all on their tablets or phones, checking their messages or scrolling through social media. And I was bored. I imagined all the posts and messages that I couldn't read. I felt pretty left out, to be honest. I think my friends noticed and we started talking. Not in a group chat, not on social media, but just talking, you know, in real life. By Thursday, I thought, hey, this is great. But then I realised just how useful those little devices are. I had art class and I forgot my things. Normally, I text Zara and borrow hers because she has lots, but I couldn't find her. In the end, I found a friend and borrowed his. I learned that without a phone, I needed to become more organised. That's what I realised on Friday, when I wanted to listen to music. I couldn't use my music library and I had nothing to connect my cool Bluetooth speakers to. Nightmare! And today's the day I can finally get online. I mean, I definitely see there are some advantages to life without technology and it is important to turn off your phone every now and then. But it's so hard and you miss out on a lot too. So now I can't wait to get back on and get into my music library. Ready? Oh, <laughs> the battery's dead. Ah, I forgot how much I hate that. <laughs> See you guys. A different kind of holiday. Two months ago, I began to think that I had a problem. I needed to study for some important exams, but I found it difficult to work. Why? I couldn't leave my phone for more than 15 minutes. One of my teachers believes that it's more difficult for students today to work hard and remember facts. It's because they can't stop thinking about phones and social media, he said. So, I decided to go on a digital detox camp for teenagers. I was stressed at first because I wanted to check my messages. Nightmare! But all my devices were at home, so I slowly relaxed during the three days. In the end, I had a brilliant time. We did lots of outdoor activities, chatted face to face and laughed a lot. Without my phone, I started to see the things around me like trees and flowers. I spent time taking photos, but not with my phone. I'm home now, so I'm using digital devices again, but I'm using them in a different way. I turn my phone off at 9pm and turn it on 11 hours later. And I only go online for an hour a day. I feel great and I'm a better student.